Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we are here to recap last week's hardware news. We're starting off with an ASRock and MSI BIOS update which allows some Z170 boards to overclock Intel i3 CPUs. And if you know anything about the Skylake i3 SKUs, none of them have a K identifier and that is Intel's way of saying it is unlocked for overclocking. So the i3 is not natively an overclocking chip, it is not natively and officially supported. With the MSI and ASRock BIOS updates, you can sort of patch the firmware on existing boards, including the X-Power Gaming TE, the Gaming M9, Gaming M7 and M5, and G45 from MSI, and a number of the X, uh, the Extreme series boards from ASRock, the Extreme 7, and so on. And you can unlock those to allow overclocking of Intel i3 CPUs. The Skylake ones, there's no uh, guarantee that this will continue to work going forward or if it'll be locked or not, but it works for now. So if you do have one of those Z170 boards from ASRock or MSI and you have an i3 CPU, it may be worth investigating and seeing if you can actually overclock them or not and how far you can get. The next news item pertains to the Samsung and Nvidia patent lawsuits that have been ongoing from both companies. So they've taken turns exchanging blows with one another over various patents and other issues. And this sort of retaliatory lawsuit that Nvidia filed recently alleges that P Samsung is infringing on Nvidia's patents in their mobile devices and they have bundled Qualcomm into that uh, sort of mess of companies suing each other. So Qualcomm is a mobile device manufacturer. They make chips for CPUs and GPUs for phones and Samsung is obviously a, a phone and tablet and manufacturer of many things. So NVIDIA was suing them, Samsung, over this patent allegation. The original ruling overturned this suit. NVIDIA appealed. It went to a higher judge. They overturned it and said uh, not only was it overturned the first time, but the patent, one of the patents was invalidated. Not this particular one, but another NVIDIA patent was invalidated in the process. So a bit of uh, attrition, I guess you could say, in that process. And now NVIDIA is appealing again. It will go to another court at some point in the future and we'll see if it actually goes anywhere or if it just sits in the court system forever. So no concern for Samsung right now, basically, as it stands. The next news item is a pretty big one. This is about Micron. Micron is a manufacturer of flash NAND for SSDs. So a lot of the big player manufacturers and uh, SSD brands will source some of their supply from Micron and Intel is included in this. Intel actually owns Micron and their flash supply comes from Micron. So that's used in a lot of the Intel SSDs including the PCIe new SSDs. So Micron is buying a company called Inoterra and that is for $3.2 billion which buys out the remaining 67% stake in this company. And this is a partnership Micron has had with Inoterra for about seven years now. They've decided to officially buy the company and now will be able to purchase their DRAM at cost and get better access to some of the memory devices that Micron does not already make in-house. So that gives Micron direct access to DRAM. It should help lower their bill of materials or BOM and that will feed into the SSD manufacturers as well, hopefully like Intel, and may cause some price drops. Next news item is AMD's four gigabyte card. So the R9 390 is an eight gigabyte video card and that is, that's available everywhere. In China, as of recently, the last week or so, the R9 390 began shipping for, with four gigabytes for a slightly cheaper price. So. That hasn't come to the US yet. If it does, we would expect a lower price because the VRAM's cheaper if you have less of it. So that is uh, something to look out for. It's not something I would really get excited about because the 390 is already fairly cheap, 300, $320 maybe. And with four gigabytes, unless it drops a substantial amount from the cost, which I don't think it will, it's, uh, it's not too worth getting hyped about. But it is certainly a newsworthy item that there will be a four gigabyte 390 model out there now. The last item for the week, for last week's roundup, is the HTC Vive. So this is a device that we've talked about a few times on the channel and on the website in great depth, actually talking about the engineering and how the Vive works. And the Vive, just a quick recap, is a virtual reality solution. It is basically designed and engineered by Valve and the HTC 
is using their production facilities to, to manufacture it and ship it more quickly. So it is the HTC Vive or the Valve Vive or, or Steam VR, whatever you want to call it, that uses lighthouses, which go in the corners of the room, and those use IR and laser scanning to track your position via some diodes that are on the headset. So the diodes receive the light and transmit your location in the room. So that is the, the HTC Vive, and the news item is that it's consumer release has been pushed back to April 2016, but pre-orders will open in February. So that's just after CES. Speaking of CES, we will be there as always, and HTC's Vive will have their development kit available on site for preview, and we're hoping to get a look at that. And of course, we'll let you all know if that happens. So that's it for last week's news recap. We're gonna take it a bit slower this week for obvious holiday reasons, but we do have some major content coming up through the next couple of days, as always. And then CES is after that, so big stuff coming from there for sure. That's all for this time. Hit the Patreon link in the, the link in the description below if you want to support us directly. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.